Hi guys! Today we will take a closer look at the M37, Tier 4 American Artillery. First of all, let me just tell you, if you are going down the American SPG line, do yourself a favor and save up some free XP to start playing with the upgraded gun from the beginning. It is really a shocking experience to go back to a very much limited firing range after finally feeling like a true artillery with the M7 Priest. Apart from this little hiccup, however, this is a fun little machine, even if it's not really exciting in any way. I had a lot of great games in it, but I didn't feel like lingering around more than I had to. We could say it's a nice little stopover on our way towards the higher tiers. Before we have a closer look at the stats and at the armor in Tank Inspector, which, by the way, will be the shortest review ever, I wanted to let you know that you can skip forward to the gameplay as usual, with the timestamps in the description below. With that out of the way, let's do some number crunching for the M37. For this, I will pull up one of my spreadsheets again, so it's easier for you to follow. So we did say before that this is not an exciting machine, but to be honest the stats are quite close for most machines in this tier. The largest differences are usually with the gun, and just as with the M7 Priest before, the M37 has also a solid middle-of-the-road gun. The penetration is not great, but it's alright at 53mm and the average 410 damage is nice. Aiming and reload times are also slightly better than the average, giving us a base rate of fire of 4 rounds per minute with a 5 second aiming time. Accuracy is not the best at 0.8 dispersion, but the gun is overall quite enjoyable to use. Just get that upgrade ASAP, so you don't have to close the distance constantly. Another nice feature is the comfortable angle of the gun, which helps to avoid constant repositioning and thus re-aiming when switching targets. We have also the typical great view range at 750 meters, which combined with an alright view range of 340 meters will help us to keep us fed with targets. Regarding the mobility, that M37 is the second fastest SPG in its tier. With 56 km per hour top speed, you can and should relocate whenever a better position opens up. It also turns quick. 28 degrees per second is the fastest in its tier. The gun traverse, on the other hand, is plain average at 16 degrees per second. Now getting to protection, we will have a quick look at the weak spots in Tank Inspector again, which reveals that this SPG is one giant weak spot. We have 12 to 13 mm of protection all around. This thing is literally a paper box, pretty much what you expect from low tier SPGs. No amount of angling is going to help you here. If someone gets too close, just shotgun them or it's bye bye. Those 180 hit points won't last too long. Regarding equipment, I did go with the usual gun rammer, gun laying drive and camo net combo, as vents are not available for this machine either. Regarding crew skills, I suggest going for Brothers in Arms with everybody at first, followed by Six Sense on the Commander and Camo with all the other crew members. Alright, so after this little review, it's time to take it out for a spin and see how it performs. Alright, so here we are in Ensk, in an encounter battle, tier 6 match. As it's encountered, I expect most of the enemy team to... at least a good portion of the enemy team to come down on the eastern side. Along the, uh, along the hills. When I'm in such a game, I usually position myself around there, behind those houses, so they, uh, the enemy doesn't have a clear line of sight. And the bushes... give me also a little bit of concealment. And there they come. We can see the trees being knocked over. and the walls being destroyed. So, where will the first enemy pop up? And we have a winner, KV1. Yeah, we have to be a bit careful around these, uh, these docks, around these houses. It's expected that soon we will have a lot of targets, so is there is no reason to, to rush any shots here. We will be better off just by taking really good shots at, uh, at vehicles we can aim well at. And yeah, we didn't do much damage to this, uh, to this KV-1. But we did hit the, uh, the front, so what can you do? But we nailed him. Yeah, that's 
that's a lot better. Oh, and he unfortunately uses a fire extinguisher. It's nothing like setting tanks on fire. And we nailed the VK as well. Ants can be such a trouble for uh, for artillery, but luckily with encounter matches, most of the teams are using the uh, clear eastern side, which gives Arty a lot better chances. So we managed to track the Jagdpanzer, and somebody nails him. So you see how wide the angle of the gun is on the minimap? It's really useful, especially on such small maps like uh, like Ensk. And the game is running fairly well. This Cromwell is going to give us a bit of trouble. And he's driving up really close to the others. And naturally, we won't risk shots there. This is artillery. It's not a precision instrument. So what we can do, pre-aim. And as soon as he nails our unfortunate teammate, we can go get them before they can roll out, roll out again. And you see the marker just uh, sliding up. This is a um, this is a problem I've been having with replays lately. It's a um, it's a mistake. It's a bug. I didn't have this in uh, in the previous patch before, so hopefully they can fix it soon. So now it's only um, Arty and the T-34 remaining. T-34 being in an unfortunate position where we can't shoot at him. So best thing to do here is to pre-aim on the suspected position of Arty, which should be around the red line. Come on. Where are you, little Arty? Oh, there he is. And unfortunately, we don't get him. But hey, not a bad match. So this was not a bad game at all. A tanker badge with 950 damage dealt and an additional 724 assisted. Not too shabby for a tier 4 machine. We got 740 base experience and almost 26,000 credits with the premium account I had going at the time. The gun was not rolling us this time either. Out of the 9 shots fired, 7 hit the target and all of them penetrated as well. Not a bad start. Alright, so here we are in another tier 6 match. This time in a standard battle on Lakeville. As it's a standard battle, I will go to my usual place. Uh, around the A1-A2 position and uh, we'll help out the guys who will um, try to push through that choke point. And unfortunately our FV304 driver is a complete moron and he's just spamming the map like crazy. I mean, not that he is, he is wrong, there is nobody guarding the um, little passage next to the lake. Uh, you don't need many guys there, probably just one or, probably one or two. 
some TDs, maybe along the along the red line, just um, with the side down, so they can keep off enemy advancement, especially uh, light tanks who like to zoom across and go after hunting. All the other guys in the city, they can just turn around and uh, shoot up everybody on the road. So you don't need much protection. That said, if he noticed that there is nobody there who should be able to help him out, then why the hell is he still in a very bad position? I mean, anybody coming uh, on the road, he will be the first one to, um, to be encountered. So, not really a bright idea, is it? And please don't spam the map. Don't be that guy. And there we go. M5 Stuart going for a suicide arty hunt. And noticing them on the on the map, I quickly turn around as well to see if he pushes forward, trying to grab all the arties. But then I see that uh, they, uh, they has the others have uh, have spotted him as well, and he gets enough attention so that I can safely turn back and ex expect him rightfully to um, to evaporate very quickly. And I derp around with the aim a little bit here trying to decide between Churchill and M6. And I go for the Churchill, but it was completely off. It's a bit tricky to get a shot in in, uh, in enemy tanks who are just under the under the reach line. It's a bit better if you aim around here. Or at tanks who have pushed over the ridge, or are actually on the ridge. Like this Churchill, who is in a very bad spot right now. And there he goes, from hero to zero, in a couple of seconds. So M6 goes back, and Vitarty, if he stays on that spot, we can't really hit him. So what we should do, and what we will eventually do, is to cover the guys as they are advancing over the ridge line, as we can expect quite a few TDs, and probably most of the Arty, if not all of it, to be um, in the K. 1-2 position, or probably in the uh, around the uh, H 1-2 position. And there is, it's a really popular sniping spot, but once you are discovered, if there is Arty in the, in the play, you are in big trouble. And that was a clean hit. Uh, probably you did see that uh, the XVM uh, damage map did not uh, notice that shot, so one, if you hit someone, who is not in sight, XVM will not realize it. And there is that sliding bug again. But coming back to the damage, it will show up correctly, of course, in the actual World of Tanks summary. And that's a good old shot, almost 200 damage. So our team gets unfortunately a little bit careless here. You can expect a lot of defense in standard battles around the enemy encampment, especially here in the south. And they unfortunately just wander straight in, in a crossfire to of all the TDs and, and artillery. There is one, there is two, there is three. I decide to go for the Hummel and I actually get a shot in. But unfortunately, it's not enough, and well, all the um, enemy tanks, well, all, all all my teammates have really quickly evaporated. Luckily, at the same time, um, my team manages to uh, secure both the city and the passage alongside the lake. So now it's time to wait for them to advance into the enemy encampment. So we have to pre-aim to the expected spots, which is pretty much around this rock, both to the west and to the east. It's possible that someone could try to sneak up at the same time to the other camp, going for a cap, but that's not happening this time. Any second now. There he is, just on the red line, as expected. And that's not a bad hit. I mean, it could have been better, it's an open-top vehicle. 
and you can see he's not moving at all. So we take a blind shot, and he goes pop. You could see from the enemy fire and from his fire that he was in the same position and had no intention to move, so he gets punished for that. So that basically means we have the two enemy artists remaining, and they have been quite good. I expect them to be here, just dug in, waiting for the enemy to, uh, to come for them. But it turns out they had other plans. They are actually up there on the hill, shooting down to, the, uh, to my teammates. So still expecting the hunter to be around here. But he's actually in a handy ambush position around the H2 point. But there is only so much you can do if you are the first, last one alive. And we get the kill. Four kills, a lot of damage, not a bad game. So, another great game as the M37 keeps on delivering. Another Ace Tanker badge with almost 1000 damage dealt and over 200 assisted. We got 767 base XP and just over 23,000 credits with a premium account. We did miss a bit more of the shots this time, but our hit percentage was still over 70%, scoring 7 penetrating hits and 1 causing some splash damage. So that's it for this little review guys, I hope you did find it useful and you will have at least as much fun playing the M37 as I did. If you did like it, please feel free to rate and comment the video, and hit that subscribe button for more content. Also, don't forget to check out the latest fail compilations for World of Tanks. They are my personal favorite. Take care guys, and see you around.